Hello, my name is Bartosz Boryna. I'm senior application engineer at ST. And I would like to show you how to offload your MCUs, having still capability to run HAI. Then, by offloading, I mean, I'm going to show you how to reach far edge. And of course, I'm going to explain what does it mean, far edge, based on the real lab results, so no theory, or only useful theory. And by offloading MCU, I mean that the MCU, for example, can sleep most of the time, or just consume the computation power for and other tasks. And of course, I'm going to finish with conclusion. I know this is embedded world event. We are not biologists, but I'm going to start from Limulus polyphemus crab, also known as a living fossil. This animal has nine eyes distributed over all body. Uh, you can see in the yellow the main eyes, also the photoreceptor on the, on the tail. And on the right hand side you can see simplified neural network structure or schematic, which is located close to the, very close to the each eye of the crab, reducing amount of data. So crab is not able to enjoy the landscape, definitely, because of his poor brain, but is able to detect movement, to detect edges. So what is important for survival? Let's mimic this approach in silicon. So this neural network can be considered as a processing unit located or integrated with the sensor, where sensor, it is an eye. And this is comparison of two approaches. The first one is, I would say, classic one for the HAI. So we have a machine learning model or algorithm running on the top of the MCU and external sensor. So the MCU share the time between data communication and inferencing. While on right hand side, you can see distributed system. So the microcontroller uh, is out of the machine learning algorithm, while the machine learning algorithm is integrated, is running on the top of the sensor itself, itself having integrated processing unit. And what is important, uh, there is still data exchange, of course, uh, serial bus, but the amount of data interchange is, 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 is significantly reduced. So it is similar to the crop approach we have just seen. And the uh, model sends only the states to the microcontroller, the results of the inference. Then microcontroller can sleep most of the time, for example. Of course, we as ST produce such a sensor. And this is an example. You can see simplified block diagram. So we have sensor core. It is MEMS sensor. Uh, in this particular use case, we have accelerometer, gyroscope, and companion temperature sensor. Also, option to connect external sensor. So it acts also as a sensor hub and then integrated processing unit. This is simplified RISC processor, having core program, data memory, and registers. And the serial bus to exchange data 
with the microcontroller also to upload the firmware because we don't have flash memory in this sensor. There is RAM only distributed between operation memory and the program memory. What are the design assumptions for this use case? We targeted this solution for the low output data rate sensors, let's say below 10 kilobits per second, so MEMS, it is good example. Application area, it is mainly predictive maintenance, for example, vibration detections and following that anomaly detection or prediction. Human activity recognition, so wearables, medical care, fall detection, etc. And because we are limited in, in the resources, we must follow efficient and compact code programming approach. And the companion processor or processing unit is really simplified, but still functional. So we have 32 bits RISC hardware uh, architecture up to 10 megahertz. Uh, as I already explained, it is RAM based. So program and data are located in RAM. There is uh, FPU, uh, floating pro uh, point unit. It is possible to implement low power approach. So not only on microcontroller, but also on the sensor. The Im implementation is really simplified, as you can see, eight kilogates. Uh, but still there is uh, hardware multiplier and neural network uh, accelerator. You can see two particular part numbers, LSM 6DSO, etc., and ISM 330IS. The parameters of the, of the sensors itself, I, I would say quite standard. I mean the ranges of the accelerator, acceleration up to 16G and the uh, uh, angular rate uh, up to 2K dPS. Output data rate, as explained already, below 10 kilobits per second. Standard power supply <coughs> uh, voltage range and low current consumption, I think. And this is hardware. It was hardware, but what about development pipeline? So we have two solutions. First solution is, I would say, a little bit more advanced, uh, allowing you to use register programming approach. This is on the left-hand side, GCC, toolchain, standard GCC <coughs> toolchain. And then on right hand side, there is a automated tool. And I would like to focus on this tool now. It is so called Nano Edge AI Studio. And this solution allows you to, to be data scientist without any knowledge about data science, because all the pipeline is automated. And this tool is focusing on the time series. So it is not for vision, not for object detection, uh, image recognition, but for, for time series, for, for sensors. This is the typical pipeline of the development. So data acquisition, pre-processing, uh, model selection training, testing of the model, then creation of the library and integration of the library. And Nano Edge AI allows you to automate all the steps, except, of course, integrating the model. But this is this is standard task of, of every embedded developer. So even the data logging is automated. So you can you can generate the binary for, for the data logger and collect uh, collect data. And what I would like to highlight, uh, the stage number two, model selection and training, and also model creation, it is the most demanding task and most, most time-consuming task for the data scientist. It is automated, but also data preprocessing algorithm selection is automated. This is 
not a trivial task, and I think you, you agree with me. So, so the speed up of the development is here and here, mainly. And what are the use cases supported by the tool? By use cases, I mean the AI use cases. So first of all, it supports anomaly detection. We so-called this use case, uh, uh, you, can, you can call it binary classifier, but this kind of model, we so-called dynamic model. This model is capable to learn on the target uh, on the microcontroller. So no need to come back to the tool chain now, uh, and, and retrain the model on the desktop, on, in the cloud. So it is very flexible use case. And you will see how small resources are needed still having capability to learn on the target. And the also important to, to know is that uh, the, the, the knowledge is iterative, is cumulative. So you can retrieval the training anytime you want. And this anomaly detection use case is supported by the sensors having integrated processing unit. The abbreviation is ISPU. Then the second use case is this very classic one, N-class classifier, the most well-known, the most common. So we just classify N-classes. Here the model is static. So once learned, the knowledge is frozen. And if you would need to add one more class or modify anything else, you need to come back to the tool and retrain. But still, it is automated. And the third use case, it is extrapolation. So we can predict a known state based on the known states. As you can see here, based on the current and voltage, supply voltage of the of the motor, you can predict the weight of the, of the clothes in the washing machine, the, the, the usage of the detergent, etc. By the way, this is real use case. We, we have such a demo on our book. And this is automated data scientist in the office, a job. In this particular uh, slide, you can see anomaly detection, evaluation. So binary classifier, we have two classes, blue balls or blue dots representing nominal behavior and red balls representing abnormal behavior. Between the balls, there is a, there is a margin, there is a rectangle, so-called functional margin, and then there is a dotted line, the decision boundary. Everything, every inference result having similarity higher than 90% means that the, that, the nominal is, that the behavior is nominal, below abnormal. The tool generates uh, or shows key indicators of the process, so the quality of the model, balanced accuracy. 100% it means that the, all the good classes has been classified as a good classes or bad classes as bad classes, and also optimize uh, the footprint. So here you can see increasing of the accuracy, while the, uh, the footprint, the resources usage is decreasing, both RAM memory and flash memory. And please focus on the numbers. RAM memory 4.4 .4 plus buffer for the data. 4.4 and flash program memory 5.7. This model is still capable to learn, or I would say even stronger, must learn. Because when generated, it is like a newborn child. And the first step is to learn the model. This is once again to, to highlight the approach I would like to show to you. So the distributed machine learning, even far. So this is far edge. We have sensor and machine learning algorithm running on the top of the sensor. Then only inference results, states, communication to the, to the microcontroller, and then optional channel 
up channel to the to the cloud. And this is real real lab I I prepared for you. Of course, we have not much enough time to show you the, the hardware. Anomaly detection of the portable USB powered fan. So two states, nominal and abnormal behavior, binary classifier, capable to learn on the, on the target. So the regular condition, nominal behavior, it was free running fun. Abnormal behavior, uh, it was kind of obstacle within the airstream, like piece of paper or, or just your hand. <coughs> and this is the result. The tool has generated pre-processing chain. So once again, to highlight, this part offloads your R&D stage and generated machine learning model. And also, point worth to highlight is that Nano Edge AI is focusing on the quite large portfolio of the models and uh, classic machine learning models. So we support neural networks. It is multi-layer perceptron, but this is only one exception of the, of the, of the neural network. Then we are using, uh, for example, random forest uh, and similar, similar machine learning models. And now see the result, balanced accuracy. So the inferencing is perfect. 100% and the resources, 3.2 kilobytes of RAM and 3.2 kilobytes of program memory. This model is capable to learn on sensor. And this is the current consumption pattern or the mode of the operation of the model. As I said, after generation, the model, the anomaly detection model is like is a newborn child, tabula rasa, if you prefer. So the first action is to learn the model. And you can see here, the mic this is the current pattern, current consumption of the microcontroller. It sleeps most of the time and wake up only following the notification from the sensor. So it is just a... Uh, uh, interrupt edge from the signal from the from the sensor uh, and this is this indicates that the learning stage is finished and then microcontroller goes goes sleep so first lesson second lesson etc last lesson and then so this is end of the of the learning process several lessons then idle state or sleep state and then asynchronous detection of the event. Again, all the indication from the sensor, so microcontroller can sleep or can perform another tasks. And conclu conclusion, I think I convince you in this very short presentation that Implementing machine learning using limited resources is possible. Three kilobytes of RAM, three kilobytes of flash in our lab. That also our tool speeds up the, significantly speeds up the R&D. And that ISPU sensors can offload MCU, uh, reducing current consumption or increasing the robustness, because we can imagine such a sensor will be destroyed or out of order for some reason, but the system is running, still running. So thank you for the presentation. And of course, we are ready to answer your questions. And uh, I'm, fo I'm focusing on the AI. We are two here with my colleague, Zuzana. She is focusing on the MEMS sensor. So if you would have deep questions re related to the MEMS sensor, Susanna is also ready to help. Maybe, okay, I cannot see any question. Maybe I will ask question 
instead of you. So probably you think uh, you, are, uh, you could ask, uh, ask me uh, if there is a need to train every unit, every microcontroller during production, because it would be not so practical. Of course, there is not such a need. You can, you can train the boy genius. And because the knowledge is stored in RAM memory, you can clone the knowledge to the, to the, to during production, having still option to, to, to be flexible on every unit. And also, no, knowledge is not disappearing after power off, because uh, for the, it is not valid for the, for the ISP sensors, but for generic use case, if you have such a model working on the top of the microcontroller, because this is also possible, you can just back up the knowledge in the flash, in the non-volatile memory and, and restore after power cycle. Yes. Oh, now it's loud. So when you make a machine learning model, all of it, um, you usually have a lot of assumptions inside of your data, which you are, maybe you are aware of them and maybe you are not aware of them. And can you, can, can, how does automatic uh, machine learning model training uh, with you uh, bypass those uh, fundamental problems that are really hard sometimes to deal with when creating machine learning models? But you mean overfitting? Yes. OK. Of course, this is, this is generic problem. Overfitting of the learning is generic problem, so we cannot avoid it. Uh, if we would go into details, uh, more details, because this solution is targeted for the time series, uh, the amount of the input data set or the size of the input data set is also not si significant. We are not talking about hundreds of megabytes even uh, megabytes, but we, ca we are talking about hundreds of kilobytes or tens of kilobytes of the input data set. And it is quite easy to avoid overfitting. But of course, the range of the variety of, of phenomenon must be covered. I know this is very generic explanation, uh, but and so mm, you have an automatic selection of a type of model. Uh, w is the result then a black box, or do you have the possibility of opening up the black box and see which, which model you, you have, uh, and, and then maybe, maybe you gain some op op mm -hmm. options manually? This is a good question. This is black box, of course, because of our IP rights. This is our added value. The tool is free, so you can use it for free unless you are using my uh, STM32. Uh, and, the, and the model is a black box. However, uh, the, when you finish this stage, so the automated data scientist stage, the tool will propose you several or even few tens of different models. And uh, one of the steps of this tool is a validation. So you can test every model in front of real data. And this is not so time-consuming process. So it is a way to avoid overfitting, but using higher abstraction layer. Thank you so much. OK, two questions from my side. First one is in the first part of the process. So is the tool able to acquire uh, uh, help uh, uh, given an uh, evaluation board to get the data set and prepare the data set for choosing the right algorithm. And second question is, is on the last part. Once you have uh, completed your ne neural network and you have built it, how do you uh, prepare the firmware uh, for the uh, ESPU? Okay. Uh, so basically, is the firmware of the ESPU integrated, the neural network integrated in the firmware of the STM32? And probably third questions, uh, does uh, everything work also in an environment with a different MCU with uh, not STM32 environment? Mm -hmm. So very practical questions. So uh, answer to the first question about loggers, yes, it is possible to, to generate the binary for, for, for particular 
list of the, of the development boards. And uh, by the way, preparation of the data logger for the, even for the target hardware is, is, is not so, 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 so huge task. So it takes a few hours or even less. And, uh, and as for to the second question, uh, very important one, uh, the, the output from the, from, the, from the tool, it is a library. Uh, so this is object library and uh, the companion uh, .h header file. And you have app API. And for example, for anomaly detection, and it is very easy to integrate like this generic, generic library, like, I don't know, whatever library you, you use. Uh, the API for the anomaly detection, so the binary classifier, has three functions. Initialization of the resources, so the allocation of the RAM buffers. Uh, learning, because we must send our model to the school. So this is the second, uh, second uh, uh, API function. And the third API function, it is inferencing. That's all. So the second name of this tool, we can say, is simplicity. OK, uh, one more question uh, here. Kind of returning to your, um, the previous question about uh, openness and it being a black box. And it might be a dumb question, but is there any way of taking the train model and exporting it and using it on other, you know, we've got your SD chip doing something at the MCU level, but you might want to use it on a more powerful processor somewhere else. So I'm thinking like but o you mean ONNX or something like that. Is mm -hmm. that something that's possible with your library or? You mean MPU or, or microcontroller? Uh, uh, or my even desktop? Yes, even desktop, all the way up, basically moving the, the, the the model that you've trained mm -hmm. to other platforms. It is the target is microcontroller always. always. So you can use it on the another micro than ST, but you need to pay. Okay. And there's no there's no software that says okay I can move it to ONNX or some other machine learning standard is, open standard. This is for Cortex M. Okay. All right. Un understood. Thank you. Okay, thank you once again.